G'day, uh, we're Jigs, 21. Fix of Fingers, make a jig for a specific need for something you need in your shop. I've got these two long boards that I made, they're glued together. I couldn't sell them because they had too much flex. What I wanna do with these is make a perfectly straight, colorful dowel. You've all seen the table saw cut the dowel jig. I wanna have a crack with the more accessible version. So circular saw instead of the table saw. I'm gonna start the process, design the jig to work with the circular saw. If it fails, if this saw doesn't have the grunt to counter the grunt of the drill, I'll just alter the jig and finish it off with the table saw. Okay, there's some colourful pieces. They'll all go on to dowel shortly. I'll just whip myself up this box and then we'll crack on with the cool stuff. So I've made the basic sled. I've got a fixed end here and I've got an adjustable end up here. Mark one, I'll put a lid on this. Make some rails of sorts. The circular saw can do the cutting from the top as opposed to the table saw from underneath. Alrighty, it's time to cut my losses on this jig. In short, it will work. I did produce a reasonable dowel on a couple of my experiments. Uh, where mine fell over was probably the dodginess of my jig. Not doing all the small things to really make sure that the, the lathe functionality ran smooth, couldn't get caught up, couldn't cross thread. All these little things that went wrong. I'm also thinking that the power of my little battery circular saw may not have the herbs and spices needed um, to do what it really has to do so it is the dominant tool to take care of business i am going to cut it there i would say if you're going to have a crack at this maybe a power circular saw um, and put a bit more time and effort into your jig it's also another thing in my shed do i want another thing in my shed not really so I've watched a heap of other videos on what people have done and it got me thinking, what can I do to keep this simple uh, and not have another massive item to store or hang in the shed to randomly use? Now, one of the big failings is probably not having some sort of bearing or some sort of bushing that the bolts can run through. Um, what eventually happens is they start to tear away that MDF and causing other problems with this little jig. So I'm gonna whip some bearings out of this skateboard and hopefully I can utilize those in the next jig. This is now the gist of what I'm thinking. I've got the cross cut sled. Now pretty much my jig is gonna be effectively just two little pieces like this. They can get clamped on to the front and back of the fence. And then the lathe action will be strung between these. Now again, for this challenge, it's for a specific need. Now I just wanna make some dead, straight, colorful, cool stuff. I'm just gonna work with this method for now. All right, I'm not gonna lie to you, I am blowing a lot of time on this, but I'm gonna keep going. Had to make a few modifications, obviously, to my sled. Um, had a few issues with the height, believe it or not. <laughs> All right, so I've got my stock in the table saw ready for a test run. I'm gonna film it in case we never see this again. So I've used a very sophisticated means of adjustment, um, which is pretty much spaces. I'm gonna be limited to what I do, and it is a very specific need as the challenge required. I've made some serious mods as discussed. I've now got a long um, contraption of bits and pieces to go through to the bolt that spins. I had to lower these bolts. That initial spot was shit um, and I didn't even touch the stock. 
Anyway, I'm not going to keep rambling shit. Let's have a crack. Not the smoothest finish, but unbelievably satisfying. Most of sleds you'll see contain all the mess. I don't actually really give a shit about that at the moment. Um, I'm going to get into lathe work soon, so I'm going to get used to seeing shavings everywhere anyway. So I'm just going to stick on my flat grind blade, um, see if that makes a difference. That tastes better. I'll hit it with some sandpaper. <laughs> Now I've got it down to just under 25 mil, which I'm sure I can get a force in a bit or go and buy another one of these bad boys. And now any smaller, my blade actually just kissed the bearings. So they are the lowest point of metal in this jig. So I backed her off and I'll just accept that's as small as I can go for now. But I think that's a pretty robust piece of dowel anyway, and the bigger, the better. So what I was also hoping was to be able to make dowel out of all this Merbu pallet wood. Now, David Kelly from Ned's Woodworking, he actually delivered me a heap of these awesome pallets, and I thought I'd be able to go full circle and deliver him back something, like something useful, like a nice Merbu dowel. But for now, I'll give him some thicker girth dowels because he was in the Navy. You know what I'm saying? David? So I've got myself a nice free solution, uh, which sort of goes with what I do here, which I like it a little bit better than buying this shit. Okay, as you can see, very messy. So if that doesn't bother you, then this jig, if you're just doing a few, will be totally fine. Uh, if you want to see the enclosed version, Anthony from Bando's Woodshop, he's actually just gone through the whole process and made the enclosed one, acrylic, all the good gear. Just gonna do one more experiment. I'm gonna spin the dowel the other way to see if the bulk of my dust goes out this side, uh, only because my dust extraction is over here. If I can maybe suck a little bit of it up, then I'll be on a bit of a winner. That one's straight off the blade. That's pretty rad. Well, right, let's see if the dust does anything. I doubt it. This is going to be a pretty aggressive cut. But it is set to my 25 mil. So I can batch it out. Okay, I can't help myself, I'm having too much fun. I'm just gonna do some taper ones because I think these Merbu handles might look all right for mallets. So I'm gonna have a crack at that as well. And if I was getting paid by the hour, I probably need to sell about 4,000 mallets to make up for all the time I've wasted. Alrighty, sticker sponsor shout out is Brian from Outdoors with BT. He's got a YouTube channel, go and check that out. Uh, he's an Aussie bloke. Also a check squared squared member. So thanks very much, Brian. You're on the pink light. 
All right, I'm gonna cut it there. So I've made heaps of dowels. I've made nice straight dowels. That was the plan. Tapered dowels. The idea was to have a jig that could reproduce the exact same dowel and maybe I would use these for something. Uh, I've burned a heap of time, it's been a heap of fun. Now, what I think I prefer to use these for is mallet handles um, rather than just straight dowels. So I'm not gonna continue on with that. I've proved that this works, so happy days. Um, but I think I'll get a lot more out of actually spinning these up on the lathe and learning those skills. David Kelly, I will get you something it may not be dows, but I will get you something from these pallets. I promise. Uh, so that's it, Woodjigs21. Thanks, James, for hosting it. It's been pretty cool. I'm watching all the videos, uh, expecting a heap more to come out really soon. All right, thanks very much. That's it for this one. Thank God. It took a while. <laughs> also, uh, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that would be awesome because, well, we all need them. So I need you, so thank you.